Okay. If a straight person was a nymphomaniac, I wouldn't say you should have pride in being a nymphomaniac. I should say that's a sexual act and you shouldn't define yourself based upon your sexual acts. You know what I'm trying to say? Right. You should you right. should find you should find a higher calling to define yourself, you know, mainly serving God's will to 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 define what you what you what you would call pride. And even then I would I would honestly say that as you begin to serve God's will, you will you learn to be more humble than anything. Go ahead. Right, but 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 how are homosexuals supposed to do God's will, learn God's will, grow in God's will if you're keeping them out the church? For questions, comments, and to show your support, visit us on the web at afroempath.com. Okay. So, a black male empath and HSP, highly sensitive person. And middle-aged. And middle-aged. How old are you, brother? 54. 54. All right. All right. I got to say for the for the listeners, when I, when I reached out to you, I'm like, hey, brother, you got to come on the podcast. You're like, oh, I'm not sure what I'll have to say or what I have to talk about. I'm like, you're a black male empath and a highly sensitive person. <laughs> like, you, you got to realize, man, you are you are a unicorn among unicorns. So, you know, your story is, is important to hear. And, and you know where that came from? What? Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you approached me and you said, look, you have something to talk about. That comes from as a black child to a black adult. No one wants to hear what you have to say. Yeah. Your opinion doesn't matter. Keep quiet. Just do what you're supposed to do or do what I say. And being the youngest in my family, it's very rare someone asks, well, what do you think? So it was just a knee jerk reaction to, well, I, I've never been asked anything before. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But thank you. But thank you for pushing it. Oh, I, I, pushing I, me, but, but I, I know I'm reach, reaching out is what I call it because yes, I realize, out. okay, so I have a community of, you know, highly sensitive. Part of that is highly anxious. You know what I'm trying to say? We were, you know, and yeah. we're introverted, you know, so we're not, we're not generally going to be the ones that want to kind of come out of the, the shadows or, you know, not, or, you know, so it's like, I got, I, I realized if I'm going to have a podcast, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to reach out to some of y'all that I, that I feel have something to, you know, that I feel I'm connected to in some, some degree, you know, that are on a certain wavelength. So. Perfect. Um, Perfect. Let, let me, let me ask you this. Did you grow up in a, a two parent household? I know a lot of us don't, you know? No, I actually grew up in a foster home. Mm -hmm. um, it was my biological aunt, but uh, she was divorced and widowed by the time she took us in. So it was a single parent home, but it wasn't my biological parent. You raised by your aunt then? Yeah. Gotcha. I was raised by my mother. So I'm just, I'm just, when you said, <laughs> when you said he's someone not listening to you, I, you know, I was like, okay, I, you, you were probably raised by, <laughs> Listen, well, I, like, go ahead. When it comes to this community, chances are very strong. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. Oh my goodness. All right, so let's 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 talk about a little bit of your childhood, man. Because you know, as empaths, generally speaking, you know, when we when we choose to incarnate into this world, we're we're not we're, we're gonna ha we're gonna have some some task ahead of us in terms of the the first the first task is generally our our family life. So let's let's start Absolutely. there, and then let's work our way up. So tell me, give me a little background about yourself, brother. Where are you from, first of all? Uh, Harlem, New York. All right, Harlem, New York. Yeah, yeah. And I'm still in New York City now, you know. Beautiful. So what, um, when, did you, when did you recognize you were different? You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not, that's, a, that's a strange thing to, to ask because it, it seems like, well, what do you mean? Everybody thinks they're different. But we know, we know we're a little bit different in terms of our awareness. You know, when did that happen for you? For me, I didn't recognize I was different being the youngest. Mm -hmm. I was always told, you're different. You know, you're contrary. If someone says right, you're going to say left. And it's like, no, I, ju I just feel left, <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, you're just trying to be a rebel. Mm -hmm. So these things were hit on me. Uh, back when I was a kid, there was no conversation of empaths. Uh, you call a boy sensitive. Those are fighting words. Yeah. You know, um, I never heard sensitive empath uh clairvoyance clairsentience i heard these words for the first time in 2016. 
So I grew up just, okay, I'm different. It got to an age where, okay, I see it now. I'm feeling certain things. I don't, I didn't know what it was for up to two years ago. I didn't know. We didn't have internet, <laughs> you know, and then what didn't see any books on this. Mm -hmm. So as, as a child, I always was aware of an energy in the household. Didn't know a name for it. Didn't know what it was called. Um, it wasn't until I was six years old that I found out that the woman raising me wasn't my mother. And I found that out from my first grade teacher. And it's like, okay, where's my mother? You know, if every, mm -hmm. I, I was at age six, everything just turned upside down for me. And, you know, I was bullied constantly by my uh, brothers and sisters. And it was a lot of anger in the household. And being the youngest, you know, it, you pass down to the one that you can beat up. So I was the youngest and the smallest. Everybody could beat me up. <laughs> and, uh, they often did. And I had a mother that was quick, you know, with the belt, quick to anger, quick to yell. You didn't have a point. You didn't have an opinion. You didn't have any say. It's a do what I say or else. So I kind of shut, I, I didn't kind of, I shut down. Mm -hmm. I shut down. I built these walls up around me. At age six? I, at age six, because oh. I was in survival mode. I didn't know it at the time, but it was like, I can't rely on these people around me. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was just looking back on it now. Uh, I understand, I understand what it was because it wasn't in, like when I was six and found out this wasn't my mother, I'm like, okay, this is why there's this disconnect. You know, this is why you know, I'm not happy here. I have to find my mother. My mother's out there somewhere. And it wasn't until I was nine that a cousin told me, no, no, you, you, your mother's dead. My mother's not dead. No, no, your mother's dead. And how did she die? Your father shot her and killed her. That's a lie. Blah, 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 blah. And I remember it was, it was a summer Friday, summer afternoon. I, I ran home. We had to wait for those horrible summer lunches. I ran home and my mother was in the kitchen. Well, my, my aunt was in the kitchen cleaning fish, you know. And I said, Ma, you know, Teddy said, you know, this happened and that happened. And she never looked at me. I can see it plain as day right now. She's scaling the fish. And she said, yeah, that's what happened. And as a nine-year-old, I'm like, well, why did he do that? And I have to say right now, black families invented don't ask, don't tell. No shit. Because <laughs> you ain't going to get an answer. And she gave me an answer that as a nine-year-old, I couldn't understand. And she said to me, because if he couldn't have her, nobody else would. And that was the end of the conversation. I didn't understand that answer as a nine-year-old. And now it's like, my mom's dead. And there's never, it was, it was no, you want to talk about it? How do you feel? They never, there was no pictures of my mother. There was no conversation of my mother. It's like she didn't exist. And uh, that made me put up even more walls around me because now it's like, I can't really trust the energy around here. And it wasn't until I was older, now I understand why I was getting beat up so much by my siblings. I was the last one born. And one of my brothers said something one time when he was like 12, I was 10. He said, yeah, notice, notice mommy died after she had Kevin. Hmm. And it was like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm being blamed for this. You know, so it was, it was really, um, it was, it was really just, strange and i couldn't talk about this with anybody didn't talk about this with anybody so i i i used to leave notes seven years old i'm running away from home 
<laughs> you know, my runaway date was always Friday, three o'clock. I was going to finish school for the week, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm going to run away from home and Friday, three o'clock came and I had nowhere to go. I mean, it's bad enough. I was bused to a different neighborhood to go to school, but had nowhere to go. And I, I, I was the biggest crybaby. I just, I just cried all the time, cried at the drop of a hat. I was just miserable. Trying to put up the front that, okay, everything's fine, or the social worker would visit, and, and, and you know, I'd put on the act that everything is great, and then I would just be miserable. I didn't understand what I was feeling. I didn't understand why this was my family. I didn't feel a part of it. And, um, Still feel that way to this day, as, yeah. as, as a middle-aged man. I'm sorry, you got to stop me because I'll keep. No, it's all good. Ba basically, <laughs> just trying to say is, essentially, you were the uh, the sacrificial lamb, so to speak, of the family in terms of being being uh, you know the, the one to soak up all the emotions of un 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 dealt with trauma, essentially, of of your mother passing. Well, th that that's what led to forgiveness. By the time I was like 27, 28, mm. I realized I wasn't the only one that lost a mother. Yeah. Um, I was three months old when she was killed, so I don't remember her at all. Mm -hmm. My siblings do remember her. They did remember her. So they were acting out. Nobody was getting help. No one was talking to us. What are you feeling? What is this? This is what's going on. It's like, we won't ever mention your mother again. So everyone had this energy, this anger, this confusion. And uh, I think to a degree I was blamed for it. You were probably disassociated with it, you know, but you're also an empath. And I, I think that's, again, that's what we do. We're, we're negative we're negative energy sponges. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Period. Yeah. You know, we're yeah. just, we are, that's, I would, I would. I would argue that that is essentially our role. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm. You know, cosmically speaking, is to, is, to, is to absorb falsehood and transmute it into higher truth. So right. let's, let's, let's use that to segue into, you know, uh, Buddhism. When, when, did that, when did that start for you? Or when did you, when did you begin to seek a spiritual path to kind of um, try and find a deeper meaning to your life? I know you, you, know, you, probably, you probably went through bouts of you know, depression and trying to find yourself and trying to ask God why and the universe. So tell me, tell me, give me an insight on that, please. I, I wouldn't call it depression. Mm -hmm. I, I would call it post-traumatic stress. And, you know, growing up in a black household, you're going to go to church, <laughs> you know, and when you go down south with grandma, you go to church twice a week. And, you know, I, I kept in my twenties going to church and I, I wasn't feeling anything. Uh, I mean, the music was great, but as far as touching me, it wasn't doing it. So oddly enough, when my aunt who raised me passed away, it's like I was born again. I didn't celebrate her passing. Trust me, I, I, I would give anything for her to be here today. Mm -hmm. But when she passed, all of a sudden, I left the church. You know, I grew my first set of dreadlocks. You know, no more meat. Things just unfolded in me. And I'm, I'm like, I'm looking for a spiritual path. And, and um, I've always enjoyed Eastern philosophy. And I went to the mosque with Islam for a while, uh, reading up on Hinduism and then Buddhism. Buddhism just clicked. Mm -hmm. And it clicked because Buddhism suggests that you sit down with yourself and find out what you're doing. What are you saying? What are your actions? What are your intentions? Check yourself. And if you're brave enough, and I like to think I was brave enough, I had to be honest with myself, with what I was feeling, what I didn't have, you know, the anger. And that's when they realized, oh, everybody was hurting. Mm -hmm. forgiveness came in that moment forgiveness came and you, you realize you know you're raised by relatives that went through the whole civil rights sit in the back of the bus drink from this water fountain there was no healing yeah 
uh, my grandparents, you know, went through the whole Jim Crow era, into the Depression, into the Civil Rights thing. There was no healing. My father, my uncle, both in World War II. You come home, sit in the back of the bus, drink from that. There's no healing. So this kind of angry, fearful, abusive energy was just getting passed along, passed along, passed along. You either try to hide it with church or everyone's a drug addict or a wino. And then uh, I, I just decided, no, I'm, 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 I'm forging my own path. Not really my own path, but I'm going a different path. Yeah. And, and, and uh, Buddhism was, was that key that unlocked understanding, it, it unlocked forgiveness. And it, in a way, saved my life. Mm -hmm. Was it a, a physical place you went or was it a book you read or like? Um, the first book I read, I, I, was, I was taking Taekwondo and we started this book club in, in, in the dojo. And it was a book by Thich Nhat Hanh, Stepping Into Peace. Stepping Into Peace, Walking Into Peace. I think it was Stepping Into Peace. And I really enjoyed that book. Shortly afterwards, he was doing a week-long retreat at Omega, Omega Institute up in Rhinebeck, New York. And I signed up. I went. Uh, I, that was the first time I took my Buddhist vows and, you know, vowed to give up meat, vowed to give, you know, just everything. And it just was a right fit. Tell me about the vows, man. I want to know. <laughs> It was just five. It was just five simple vows. Okay. Give up. Give up meat. Uh, give up drugs and alcohol. Give up lying. Give up stealing, and give up uh, promiscuity. And I have to tell you, uh, Louis. Uh, Louis, excuse me. That's fine. Either one works. It was about three hundred of us up there at that retreat. Out of the 300 of us, I think eight of us took all five vows. Everyone had a reason why, oh, I, I can't give up meat. That's how I get my protein. Oh, I can't give up wine. My, my sister owns a winery, and every year we get a bottle of wine for Christmas. And and there was even the gay community up there. Uh, I still remember the guys that we belong to the body electric, and we feel that we're entitled to be free with our bodies. And every time someone protested, the monk or the nun just said, well, just don't take that vow. Just don't take that vow. You know, it was just this calm, cool detachment from everyone else's attachment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it was, it was just beautiful to see. It was just beautiful to be a part of. And um, one of the best things I've ever done for myself. Wow. That's, that's beautiful to hear, man. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. So, but I, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. No, no. no, no. I, well, I, 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 that, that was Zen Buddhism. But a year later, I took vows as a Tibetan Buddhist because that was a bit more regimented as far as your altar, your meditation time, and, and you say deliberate prayers and mantras. And that was a bit more... Uh, in agreement with my personality. I needed something more regimented. So you said uh, Tibetan Buddhism, is that what you said you got into? Yes. All right, so yes. can you ex des uh, describe the differences between Zen Buddhism and, and Tibetan Buddhism, please? Well, with Zen Buddhism, it's more, you know, the breath. Uh, there weren't any mantras. Um, your altar, I mean, the altar that they had was like a bouquet of flowers. And it just seemed... I don't want to say more hippie. That's not the right way to say it. It just seemed like a light, airy kind of spirituality. Mm -hmm. And Tibetan Buddhism to me just feels more grounded. You know, there's, there's a Buddha on my altar. You know, I, I like candles. I make offerings. Uh, there are opening prayers. There are mantras. There's, you know, visualizations that you do. That, it's, it's just more... Um, 
it just resonates with me more. Gotcha. Could you could you tell me uh, a mantra that you use by any chance? Uh, one of the mantras that uh, we use is for um, a bodhisattva named Avalokiteshvara, or Chinrizig for short. He's the Buddha of compassion, and it's an eight syllable mantra: Om Mani Padme Hum. And you know, we just say it out loud while you know you're breathing. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. And with time. You say it quietly to yourself. You don't, you don't chant it outside. You're saying it internally. Mm -hmm. And it's for compassion for yourself, for the world, for your enemies, you know, people who you felt may have wronged you. It, it opens the, the, the heart yeah. for forgiveness. Wow. And to see others as yourself. Because we're all the same energy. Hmm. I like your energy. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so your your life path number eleven. I'm a life path number seven. I don't know sevens. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm compassionate, but I'm just in a different way. How do you, you know I was number eleven? Because you because you put it in the group, brother. You put you put you. Uh, oh, see, that's that's the danger of of, of social media. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> That's well, got skills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, I, uh, I, look, I, I put it this way: if I almost like the people that I, there's certain people that I come in the group and I, I feel a connection with. You know what I'm trying to say? Just intuitively, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I like to know everything about them just to get a, just to like that's just how my mind works, you know. Right, um, right. That's a good way to be. Yeah, yeah. But I, you know, I, I just, I just, I, you know, I just as a life path number seven, I just love, I love that life path number eleven energy, man. Oh, thank I, you, thank I, you. I respect it because you know my my like I I study uh, like alchemy and gnosticism I guess which is oh, okay. which is a lot like it it still deals it still deals with compassion but it but it's a lot it's a lot um, is it harsher I don't know it's just a lot it's very it's very it's very raw it's very I don't know I, I'm not trying to how to compare it to Buddhism like for me personally like. I, I like I can put it. I have compassion, but I don't have compassion for everybody, you know. Oh, understandable. I don't either. Gotcha. So how? So okay, so I'm, all right. So we got to get into this because I. Okay. Okay. Because you you were saying you know compassion. Yeah, I thought you said compassion for all people or something like that or whatever. Compassion, but, which you will find that you have can be in the form of, I don't like you, but you know what? I'm going to be compassionate enough to leave you alone. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be compassionate enough not to be consumed with hate over you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be compassionate enough to be cordial mm -hmm. to you, as long as you're cordial to me. Yeah. Compassion doesn't mean you like everybody. Gotcha. But you treat everyone the way you would want to be treated. Gotcha. Okay. And you keep it moving. And you keep it moving. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I can roll with that. You know, mm -hmm. I was I was a little confused with Buddhism until in t and then then I I saw this quote from I think it's the Dalai Lama. You know, I'm not. Mm -hmm. You know, there's probably several, but or incarnations, whatever. But he said something like, "This is this is when the um, the Buddhist monks were being um, I guess ousted out by the Chinese." Yes. Um, and he said a quote something like, "You know, if 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 somebody." is to take up arms and use a gun against you, it'd be intelligent to get a gun of your own and take up arms yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, you know, some people, some people might, some people that don't understand Buddhism, you know, or, you know, or Tibetan Buddhism, should I should say, might be a little shocked to hear that because they might think that they're pacifists, but these people actually, these, these monks actually went and, and bought AK-47s. Well, I, I think a lot of times here in the West, mm -hmm we'll have a definition for a word and think the rest of the world has that same definition for that same word. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's compassionate to us or what we were taught compassion was, it's not the same compassion everybody's talking about. I mean, you know, there's stories in the Bible when Jesus went into town and was turning over tables and, and destroying things when he saw people, you know, gambling and, 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 and doing otherwise. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when he was on the cross, he said, forgive them for they know not what they do. Mm -hmm. So 
there is a time when you have to step up and let people know, you know, I'm, I'm not the one. I don't think you want to go there with me. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, you don't necessarily pick up an AK and go into a school and shoot up everybody because you're angry. You know, so compassion. Yeah, you have to have compassion for yourself. Yeah. And your loved ones. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, th- I think I think people sometimes will co- will associate compassion with pacifism. Right. That's that's right. that's where like some and I th- I think I th- I could be wrong, but you were we were saying earlier about z- the Zen Buddhism uh, that you first initially get, re- was introduced to. You thought that maybe some of the practitioners may have been kind of a little bit like in that hippie side type vibe, or or, or what? No, 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 no. Um, some of the other practitioners were still attached to their attachments. You know, I, I want to have sex with whoever I have sex with. But, you know, monogamy? Why do I have to have monogamy? And it's like, oh, okay. For me, I like, I want to get rid of all this stuff. You know, it's not serving me. So I was on a different, I was there for different reasons. Uh, other people, I have to have meat. You know, that's how I get my protein, mm-hmm. which is, okay, you know. That, that's your pet and again that's where the compassion comes in because it could have easily been no you're here because you have to do this and these are the rules not the compassion was take the vows that you can handle it's okay how does that work take the vows you can handle meaning that oh oh so basically you just, you just try and cut those out of your life and you work on the next and work work on eventually completing all five of the no if if all you can do is give up cigarettes mm-hmm. And that's the only vow you take. And you're, you're still a Buddhist. You're still a Buddhist. Oh, I if see you what you're saying. Up, if you can give up two of the five, okay. You're still a Buddhist. I mean, there are people getting baptized every month in church. They haven't totally given up sin. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Gotcha. That's true. Gotcha. You know, so gotcha. Yeah. That's, that's again, compassion. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't know, me personally, I, wa- I wonder if that just breeds, like, people people just a, sl- a slack attitude towards spirituality. You know I'm trying to say? What do you feel? I think you plant a seed wherever you can. Mm-hmm. And if it sprouts and that person says, you know what, I feel good giving up cigarettes. Let me try giving up meat next. If they grow and maybe eventually give up all five vows. Or maybe they just grow and say, you know what, I'm going to become a monk and take even more vows. You plant seeds and hope for the best. You can't, you can't make something grow before it's time. I hear you. I mean, I, I, I respect people that, that do what they're doing because I, I, I see the value in it. But for me, I, I, I don't think I could ever do that, be up there telling people to, I'd be like, nah, man, you got to, like, I'm to the point now where it's like, that's just that's just my personality. But anyway, I'm I'm going to digress. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> let me ask you this about the whole sex thing. So, what 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 is their their vow in terms of sex? What, what what's that like? What's what's that about? I'm confused. Um, sex with them is being a monogamous relationship. Have sex with that person you're in that relationship with, and don't sleep around with anybody and everybody. And I have to say, they were very. Uh, what's the word? Like, accepting of gay and lesbian people in their relationships. They didn't say anything about, oh, no homosexuality, no lesbianism. Whatever your choice is, one person. Gotcha. What's your, what's, what's your, I mean, okay, I, I know that some sects of Buddhism don't, don't, would consider that a, a, a natural sexual act, though. So, some, some, some do. Mm-hmm. Some do, but this particular group, didn't have a problem with it. Gotcha. So what's, what's, your, what's your take on it? My take on it, oddly enough, it worked for me because energetically I couldn't deal with a bunch of women. Um, it was a sacrifice almost to, to find one woman that, whose energy resonated with me. And I was comfortable enough to have sexual uh, relations with her, no, I, hear I you. was n- I was never a player. No, I hear you. But I'm, I'm talking no. about I'm talking about um, this is we're going back. This is the first the first uh, Zen Buddhism thing. I'm, right. I'm like I'm assuming that there was you know uh, you said there's a homosexual community there. Like 
Did you, did you, did you feel, did you feel like, um, I'm asking you, how, how did you feel about the, the homosexual aspect of it? You, understand? you didn't, you didn't feel, you didn't feel like that was a little I, bit of a threat you, you to know, you? At the risk of sounding selfish. Yes. I was there for me. Yeah. And I know what I wanted. Yeah. I, at that point in my life, I, 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 at that moment, I couldn't take on anybody else's responsibilities or anyone else's leanings or, I can't do and can't do. I have to do this for me. And I just allowed myself to be selfish for that week mm -hmm. and do my thing. Gotcha. Um, you know, everyone has their own battles. Everyone has their own life. I'm not here to control anybody. No, I hear you. I hear you. I'm just like, my, my thing is like, I'm just... I'm thinking about myself. If if our if our no, I I couldn't be in your shoes because I'm my own my own person. But if I were to go in there as, as me, I'd be thinking to myself like, where is the the uh, does it, does it, for me? Does that, there's just not enough structure in that. It just it just seems too. It just seem it just seems too like um, it just it just it just seems like it it just it just breeds. I don't know. You know, there's a part of me that's thinking. There's a part of me that's thinking to myself. Okay, it's good that they're that they're that they're trying to make improvements on. They're taking vows to make improvements on their life. Then there's a part of me that's like, I be out of. This is not out of me being hateful, but me being out of love. Like you should, you should like let people. I don't know. It's like I understand what you're saying. Uh, I understand exactly yeah. what you're saying. It's like I'll put it this way: if 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 if, if there if there's a it's, this is not just the the homosexuality thing, but that that's that's part of it. I'm saying that if there's a, a sickness within somebody. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. I can't. I just can't. Like me personally. Like, number one, I'm, I don't. I don't deal. I don't have any large organization or or church or anything like that. You know, I just talk to people one on one. You know I'm trying to say, but if right. but if there's some if there's something that I think that like that's not really. But I'm not gonna put it. I don't. I don't. I'm gonna put it. Like, I've sp I've spoken to a, a a gentleman that was you know bisexual whatever you know mm -hmm, and we mm -hmm. we got along fine man and I, and I could i could see you know he had he had um been molested as a child you know what i'm trying to say mm, yeah. and sodomized and right. um no i didn't talk about that but there but we, we both know and he knows it and we talked about it in a different way but there's there are certain demonic demonic energies that get that get put into you, you know what i'm trying to say through through that type of rape you know what i'm trying to say that right. transpires, and so right. these the, those, that type of that type of uh, demonic energy gets pa gets can get passed down. You know what I'm trying to say a lot of, a lot of people, um, I put it a lot of people. I think a lot of a lot of people in this like the the LGBT community, whatever, like mm -hmm. um, they they're looking they're looking for places to kind of fit in. You know what I'm trying to say they're looking for God, but like. I, I don't know. I, instead of accepting them, I would I would rather like I, I say if I if I have this is the perfect world obviously hypothetically, but like I would I think the people like they're, they're they need to be a, that like what happened to them needs to be addressed. You know what I'm trying to say like that that their childhood needs to be addressed. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah, I I understand what you're trying to say. Yeah. Um, the only problem with that you can't make someone better. They have to want to get better. Like you can't make someone with an addiction give up the addiction. They I, have to come to themselves and say, you know what, I have this problem. I'm not equating homosexuality with the problem or addiction. Yeah, they're just trying to, you know, uh, make an analogy um, or give an example, I should say. Yeah. But I think if someone's been molested as a child. I couldn't now go to them as an adult and say, you have to give this up. You know, they're dealing with stuff I haven't dealt with. Yeah. They're dealing with stuff I have no idea what's going on in their heart and mind. So I'm not, I don't feel like I'm in a position to chastise them. Now, uh, if it's your church home or it's your uh, spiritual organization, you have the right to say, okay, we don't allow you in our space until you deal with so-and-so. Yeah. You have a right to do that because it's your personal space. Yeah. But I don't know if anyone's going to be open to uh, isolation and, 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 and 
I don't want to say chastisement, but but you know, they, they, just they, not they were, just not being accepted into the to the, to the congregation or, or to the 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 group or whatever. You know, like mm-hmm, I just mm-hmm. I just part of me feels like you know like that put that puts that puts like I'm gonna put it. Like this is, I mean, I don't need to read the Bible to know this, but basically, you know, right. you eventually through the company that you have, your vibrations normalize. You know what I'm trying to say? Right, right. So, for example, if 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 um, you know, I, I've been around women, you know, that have not had fathers in their life and long for a father. Sometimes they, whether they 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 might not even recognize it, but they they're seeking a male energy, and they can just be like energy vampires sometimes. You know what I'm trying to say? Absolutely, absolutely. And that same type of energy. Gay men have that. I would say t- times two. You know what I'm trying to say? Where they're where they're 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 hyper feminine and off balance. You know what I'm trying to say? And they're they're like right. they like seeking masculine energy, and so right. that begins to draw from me. You know what I'm trying to say? Draw from draw from my energy field. Now, uh, it doesn't ha- I mean, it doesn't have to if, I, if I'm just passing by them. But if it's like if if we're in close proximity and we're going to the same, I'm assuming you guys, the Buddhists would go to temples. I'm assuming they, you know, there must be. Well, right? I, as of right now, I don't have a Buddhist group anymore. Yeah. But, but I am listening to but you. I'm, I'm listening but, I'm, to but, I'm, but I'm just making a hypothetical. But I'm saying initially right. there there probably was some kind of congregation, right? Or some kind of meeting place, right? Or, or no? A sangha, yes. We had gotcha. a small sangha, yes. So I'm just saying, like, if... And me as an empath, I'm not sure if anybody's that sensitive. You know, some some people are, you know, can be in their some people may be in their own worlds closed off. But me, I feel everybody. You know what I'm trying to say? And right, so, right, it's so, right. and so it's like I I like I told the brother I was talking to, like I I have I've had to like there's certain people that I just that are not at, at a certain place where they're not they're like they're they're it's not distraction. Just, they're not wanting to. They're not wanting to acknowledge it. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, right, like right, there's right. a, there's a, there, there's a, there's something. They, they have a certain pride now. You know what I'm mm-hmm, trying to say? Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. they even use the term pride. And I'm like, well, may, maybe you should look into the root of the issue. You know what I'm trying to say? Instead of you know being proud of you know a, an operation to make yourself look a certain way or something like that. You know what I'm trying to say. So I'm just saying like, I, I'm, I'm my thing with Buddhism is that like. And this is obviously this is this, there's many sex of it, but I'm just saying like right. one of my critiques would be that like they they seem as if they are open to allowing people in um, that may be a bit of a detriment spiritually to to the to the vibration of of the whole. If that makes any sense. Well, um, I'll put it to you this way: mm. I've never been in a situation where someone was a detriment to the, the meeting, the teachings, the ceremonies. I've never been in that situation. Um, if you're sensitive to energy, mm-hmm. you're sensitive to everybody's energy because there's liars in there, yeah. there's cheaters in there, there's adulterers, there's uh, nymphomaniacs in there. Um, I couldn't just go to someone who's two cushions down from me who might be gay or lesbian and just zero in on them only. I'm kind of picking up on everybody in the room and trying to figure out, well, where am I going to sit where I'm most comfortable? Um, I can't just zero in on one person. Yeah. Um, we've all, you know, they say, you know, let he who's without sin cast the first stone. Um, I, I just can't pick on one sin from one group and focus on that, especially when I know I don't live in a glass house. You know, I'm not perfect. We're all on this journey towards that. Mm -hmm. So as long as while we're in this meeting or the ceremony, if we all can conduct ourselves by the expected tenets and and, and vows that we took while we're here, fine. What you do once we leave, that's on you. Mm -hmm. While we're here, we're going to work as one, move as one, chant as one and be as one as much as possible and 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 that's that's the overall objective i i, I kind of just pick up on everybody's energy i can't i can't now if someone comes in sashaying and cracking gum you know yeah. it, it's going to be just as annoying to me if it's a dude doing that or if it's a female doing that both are going to be annoying yeah. you know i just can't put it on one one side oh yeah of course no, I I hear you, but the the difference is is that like, you know, uh, a, a woman doing it, who knows? You know, that that might be something you you might 
you know, if she's good looking, who knows? Maybe you might at least look at value, you know, value at least her the way she looks, some of that, you know? I mean, maybe well, you're. If, maybe, if, she's, maybe, if she's a good looking woman, she don't have to come with cracking gum. You ain't lying. I'm, I, you ain't, you know, I, hear, so. I hear what you're saying. I'm just saying, on a, at least on a certain <laughs> sense, there's something that could be obtained from that. You're trying to say on a certain level. Now, listen, you might, you might be, you know, you know, on a, a higher level and a, a greater path no, than I no, respect. No, 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 no. Yeah. I know. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. But for me, I get on the subway and I feel everybody. Yeah. I don't just feel one particular group. Of course, <laughs> of know? course. I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to say that. I'm just. I'm just making. I'm just. It's kind of a, a, a big topic right now. You know what I'm trying to say? Right. Well, so. I, I put it this way. I'm not in favor of. I mean, everyone should have pride in who they are, but I'm, I'm not in favor of anyone's pride being a higher priority than mine. You know, be it the feminist movement or, or the LGBTQ, you know, we're all looking for uh, respect and our place in this world, but I'm not gonna put anyone before me. I'm gonna say their, their needs outweighs mine. No, but I, I will respect everyone's desire to be treated with respect and understanding. Gotcha. Um, and, and, and that's that's just where I have to come from because I don't know what everybody's dealing with. Yeah, my my thing is like, what what are we, what are we basing our pride off of though? You're trying to say like, in my in my in my in my thing, my understanding is like, I'm proud because I I I. You know, I, I live by five principles, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I feel as, as, as long as I live my life in, within those five guidelines, mm -hmm. then, I'm, then I'm serving God's will. Even, even, if, even if during that process, um, you know, uh, negativity or, 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 or harm may come my way, you know what I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. in, in this physical mm -hmm. world by people that are, not seeking, that are not seeking to serve God's will, which I feel is God's will, you know what I'm trying to say? Um, okay. and basically I, I feel like that, that, that is, that is the foundation of, for pride to be, to be on, you know what I'm trying to say? And I feel that if, if you are living, a, if you're living a lie, you know what I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. in terms of not dealing with, um, think things, things that have, you know, whether, whether, like you said, whether, whether it's the guy, the, the nymphomaniac, mm -hmm. she, she's, she's, she's probably seeking she's probably seeking love in, a, in a, an unhealthy way you know, she might have right. issues with sexual issues as well as well you right. know the guy that's a smoker might have issues with anxiety he might be seeking it as well mm -hmm. like i'm trying to say like I, I i i feel i understand what you're trying to say but that becomes a problem now or has the potential to become a problem because what about those people who are atheists who don't believe in a God, but have their principles of how life should be led. Does your principles outweigh theirs? Because you're not an atheist. No, it's not. It's not about that. It's, it, it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter whether you, whether you. I can put it this way: like, if if, if the, way, the way I see it, if if God if God is if God is love, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then it's not. It's not. It's not going to matter whether whether you whether you call yourself a Christian, a Muslim, a Buddhist, etc. You know what I'm trying to say? Right. Right. But the 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 thing is, like, you have to you have to live your life within those guidelines of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, and the thing is, is that how to put it. I'm, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to like seem like I'm trying to like go too deep on the home, the homosexuality thing. But no, like, no, no, no. Oh, it's, it's conversation. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm Um, but I, you know, I, I, I feel that basically, I'm more of an esoteric Christian, but I'm just going to use the, the the example of Christ, right? Mm -hmm. I feel mm -hmm. that 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 is the the example. I'm trying to say in the path that all all men, I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. should be should be using as a guideline to live their life. I'm trying to say. Well, I mean, if that's the guideline, Christ did hang out with like 12 dudes all the time, you know? So, I mean, maybe people looked at him and thought he was... No. You know, but you you, you said love. You, you say love and love is one of your tenets. Well, one of the tenets that you, uh, of the five tenets you live by. Where's the love for the others? What do you mean? I'm sorry, what do you, what do you mean by that? Love for your fellow man. Okay, they're... they're, they're 
homosexual or they're lesbian or they're an alcoholic. Yes. Love them as best you can anyway. Exactly. Don't, don't, don't let yourself be distracted by... I can't, I can't love them without truth, though. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? The, tr the truth... Well, 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 the, go ahead. The, the, go ahead. What's that truth? I was say, what's that truth? The, tru the truth is, is that... I put it there. Let's make it plain. Yeah, make it plain. I, yeah. I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to. You know, I'm, I'm trying to. Like, they're not okay. In, in, or in order to walk that path of Christ, you're trying to say, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Christ is a is a masculine man. You're know trying to say, you know, he's yes. a balanced he's a balanced masculine and feminine. But he, but you know, he, he he he. I would say that he explored his masculine side in terms of being a, a being being willing to die for God and being being willing to be a warrior and a soldier. You know what I'm trying to Absolutely. say to lay Absolutely. down his life if necessary. You know what I'm trying to say? Right. He could have right. said, um, I'm not the son of God, and I'm sure he wouldn't have got crucified. You know what I'm trying to say? And there would he Absolutely. never he never would became the Christ. The point is, the point is is that he would have been more like a Nat Turner or a Malcolm X type dude than than a Richard Simmons. You know what I'm trying to say? Okay, but let me ask you something. Sure. How many heterosexual men out there are a Malcolm X type dude? I agree. So, and Malcolm X is one of my personal heroes. Yes, <laughs> you know, he he saved my life when I was in college. Yes, but but you know, how many people are going to be that Malcolm X? You know, so it's Christ not a, is good. Christ is a very high standard, especially when we're told we're all born, born short of the glory and born in sin. Well, it says you know, it says in the Bible, "Be ye perfect as your, as your Father is in heaven." So you're supposed to be you're supposed to be you're, if you're here on earth, you're just supposed to be per, striving for perfection, no? And some strive a little harder than others. Some are more successful than others. Some might not even see themselves as having a problem. Um, I, I I think I guess just at my age. And what I've gone through, I'm at a point now where it's like, okay, I see all that's going on. I'm just going to be a witness and not get all caught up in everybody else's battle because it's taken away from my purpose in this lifetime. I hear you, brother, and I, and I and I love and admire and respect your purpose and you your path to finding inner peace. It's a it's a beautiful story. It's a beautiful journey. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm just like, I, you know, it's, a, it's an opportunity for me to be able to speak to someone that knows Buddhism. You know what I'm trying to say? Oh, and, absolutely. And trying, and trying to compare and contrast different philosophies. It's, it's, it, you know, that's all. Well, like you said, there's, there's some Buddhist sects that, that uh, will say that uh, homosexuality and lesbianism is not allowed. There's some Buddhist sects that would say even between man and a woman, there's no anal sex, there's no oral sex. You know, so again, you're saying there's no sex no, period. You're saying for, no, them. no anal sex. Oh, okay, but but the with a man and a woman. Okay, you know, that's oh, I, oh, okay, so you're saying no, no. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. You know, or no oral sex. You don't go down on each other. Gotcha. Kind of, you know, between with a man and a woman. So different schools will take it to different levels. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. My thing is, are they are they giving the science behind why that's wrong? I couldn't tell you. I can't say yes or no because I've just read things in passing. I'm yep. not part of those schools mm -hmm. to say what they teach or don't, or don't teach. I, I, I shouldn't say I know, but I've gleaned a little bit. But basically from my small understanding of it, like um, a, a man uh, has like a negative charge in his chest. A woman has like a positive charge in her chest, right? Mm -hmm. A man has a positive charge in his sexual organs and a woman has a negative charge in her sexual organs. You know what I'm trying to say? Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's like when they come together, it's like, obviously, you know, that's like a, like a battery. You know what I'm trying to say? Right. 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 So it's like there, there is, there is, it, it creates a, it creates a charge there or a spark. You know what I'm trying to say? Yes. Um, and when, you know, when, when two men come together, now they might, they might still feel something, but they're not, they're not, they're not creating the energy conducive to, to harmony and balance. I'm trying to say in order. Absolutely. So Absolutely. it's like I believe you know there's a the Christians have a concept called the body of Christ, right? That means we're all we're all connected by our eternal souls, right? Yes. And so, in Gnosticism, you know, some Gnostic sects were so were so strict or so out there that they didn't they didn't even want to procreate. 
obviously, you know, you've heard some Christian sects that died off, obviously, that they didn't want to procreate because they didn't want to be on earth anymore. You know what I'm trying to say? Right. right. So in Gnosticism, we would look at um, giving or having a child as a necessary evil because you would never um, bring someone that you love into a he- into hell. You know what I'm trying to say? Right. But that has to happen in order for these bodies have to come in here so that in order for, you know, um, Christ and angels to be able to incarnate, to do the work that they have to do. You know what I'm trying to say? To, to, mm. to, to, to help raise the vibration of the, of this world. So my thing is that like, number one, it's, you know, it could be, it could be immoral for the fact that you're, that you're not, you're not dealing with the underlying root of your issue. It could be immoral that you're having pride in, 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 uh, basically a sexual act or maybe, or maybe a, a moral, a moral uh, act. And then on top of that, you might, you, then you also have the issue where you're, dr- you're drawing, you're trying, a lot of these people don't realize that they're draw they're drawing energy from, from some of them do get a kick out of trying to turn men, straight men. You know what I'm trying to of say, course. and of so course. there's a certain strange energy, energy there. You're know trying to say a perversion, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and then the, 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 the next thing in terms of just the religious aspect of it is they're not, they're not walking the, they're not walking the path in terms of being an upright, you know, uh, just like, again, a Christ-like man, you're trying to say a, ma- a masculine man. Then mm-hmm. there's another aspect of it, a genetic aspect of it, where we could go back to how we as a, a, the original people didn't have uh, the rhesus monkey gene in our DNA. And right. that that's something that we got, you know, th- you know, so, you know, in Africa right now, there's still Africans that don't that have no rhesus monkey gene. But obviously in America, many of us do have that. And we're RH mm-hmm. positive. That means that monk that that RH stands for uh, rhesus monkey. So the rhesus monkeys do practice homosexual acts. If you look them up, a lot of monkeys do. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's that's something that came more from the animal kingdom. That's not something that we as you know, uh, African people or Moorish people or black people mm-hmm. did. So it's, it's, right. it's, un, it's unnatural. It's against our nature. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's ungodly. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. Because it's like, again, if we're all part of our body, the body of Christ and we all have a role to play on this, this earth, then if they're not part of the body, they're, they're free radicals in the body. That means they're, that means I'm not trying to say they're diseased in terms of like that they can never be saved or whatever, that they can, you know, they have no, like they don't have souls and that they don't, they don't have a chance for eternal life. I'm just saying that like, that that path i'll put it to this way there, i spoke to that one brother right and what right. i realized you know what he he is on a spiritual path and here's what here's what he came to do he came to do this there there is demons there are there there are demons within non-homosexuals right but right. there but there are certainly demons within homosexuals right okay. and the way i see it is if, if demons are passed on through both uh, if demons i can put it this way if if a demon put, can come into one, a host body right wouldn't right. that demon rather that host be able to sleep with both sexes? Uh, Does that make sense? I'm just saying from a demon's perspective. You know what I'm trying to say? I I, I can't. There's yeah. I see speak on the demons mentality. Yeah. Uh, I would think demons have been on the loose a lot longer than I've been alive. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying so, <laughs> hypothetically. It would be, obviously, it would be. It would, I'm saying demonic wise, it'd be more beneficial if you could if you could do both. I'm just saying hypothetically, right? Why would you? Why would a demon not want to be let loose and to 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 have whatever it could have? I'm trying to say more options, right? Well, demons do have more options. I mean, it's being shown in war, in violence, in the drugs. I I hear what you're saying, but the thing is, is that that's that's easy to, that's easy to understand as being wrong and immoral. We understand that, right? Mm-hmm. But there there is something a little more sinister in 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 this whole homosexual or the LGBTQ thing where it's it's being seen as something that is is is, is not immoral you know what I'm trying to say so i understand what you're saying yeah I understand what you're saying. yeah so i mean there i mean there's 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 so there's so many ways to kind of to kind of talk about it but ultimately let me go back to this this, this that one brother i talked about so right. in terms of as far as far as what i gleaned from his story right he actually mm-hmm. is on a positive path and he's a homo a, a bisexual man Here's right. here's here's what, from my what I can from here's 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 what he did. Those demons that I just talked about, 
he he came to take those on within himself, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he, instead of, as you know, a lot of people that are molested, you know, go on to molest other boys, right? Yes. He did not do that, right? He took he took those demons on within himself, and transmuted them, and 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 use those de- use that use that that falsehood and cultivate it within himself through a process of alchemy to still to still serve God's will. You know what I'm trying to say? The, yes. the brother the brother's been celibate for six years now. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. there no so there there is there is a a path for them. You know what I'm trying to say? But still you know there. He couldn't. He you know. He came from. He came from a life where he was waking up in. He would wake up in, in you know in his bed and didn't know how he got there. You know what I'm trying to say, or, you know, or things like that. You know what I'm trying to say. So he was. It was. It was that. It was that kind of lifestyle. But you know, he said he was running, kind of running away from his past. What 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 had happened to him as 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 a as a as a, as a, as a young boy. But yes. the point is, I'm not. I'm not. I I don't have hatred towards. People, oh, people yeah, that, are, yeah, yeah, of okay, course, yeah, tell, oh, yeah, okay. I was just, kidding, just, kidding, just for our, our listeners, I don't have hatred. My thing is like, that, like, I have love for them. You know what I'm trying to say? And, mm-hmm. be, and because mm-hmm. of that, I look at them as pe- people that need to be healed, just as a straight person needs to be healed. You know what I'm trying to say? Okay. And, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't call, I wouldn't say if a straight person was a nymphomaniac, I wouldn't say you should have pride in being a nymphomaniac. I should say that's a sexual act. And you shouldn't define yourself based upon your sexual acts. You know what I'm trying to say? Right. You should you right. should find you should find a higher calling to define yourself. You know, mainly serving God's will to 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 define what you what you what you would call pride. And even then, I would I would honestly say that as you begin to serve God's will, you will you learn to be more humble. You know what I'm trying to say? Than anything. You know what I'm trying to say? Go ahead. Right, but 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 how are homosexuals supposed to do God's will? Learn God's will? Growing God's will if you're keeping them out the church. I think that in order for them to get back into the church, mm-hmm. they have to they have to first go through some type of psychotherapy, man, or 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 or, mm-hmm. or maybe maybe people from the church can help them out with that. But the thing is, is that they need to they need to get to the just just they need to get to the root of their issue. Like for example, there's a there's a the thing now you know this, there's there's debates about trans, this transgender thing. I'm trying to say, and I was yeah. I was watching this this uh, this documentary. This is something that you, you rarely see. It just came out. I was made by RT. And it was these transgender men that were talking about how they regretted what they did. You know what I'm trying to say? Oh, I think there's a large percentage of them that go back. Exactly. And, the original and they went room. and they, yeah, it's, it's a complete mess, you know? Mm-hmm. So the, th- the thing, the thing is, is that like he, he himself said that, um, he said a, a person, a person that could think that you could change your gender has a hard time dealing with the truth. That's what a transgender yes. man said after, yes. after he had. So again, I live my life by five principles, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Truth is one of those. So mm-hmm. if you cannot handle that, that truth that you, that, that, that you are, that you have an illness, that you have a sickness, how are you going to be able to further go into higher, deeper truths? So you deal, you deal with them where they're at. Right. And you handle that, that issue before you go piling on more hyper, higher, higher lessons. That's you don't you don't start a foundation with somebody if you know on 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 uh on rubble you know what I'm trying to, or right. on, on something yeah, that's shaky weak foundation. exactly yeah. Yeah. exactly so you get their foundation correct because mm-hmm. if you care about somebody you love somebody you want to see them strong. Hmm. Hmm. And that's the thing. I don't. I don't think. I don't think people really love, love, care enough about people, man. That's the thing. If you care about people, you want to see them as strong, and you're going to say the things that people don't want to hear. You know what I'm trying to say? It's not. It's not. It's not. It's, it's not always about what you want. It's about what you need. You know what I'm trying to say? It's not. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not. I, there's some people. I feel like we live in a world where, in spirituality, where people don't. It's like people don't care enough about people to tell them the things that 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 they really need to hear. You know what I'm trying to say we just we just want to have pleasantries and you know that's not ple- pleasant you know th- th- I mean I haven't read the whole Bible but from the stories I've seen and even from the story of Buddha it wasn't a he didn't he didn't he wasn't looking for pleasantries he I would no. I would I would say he he gave up his entire pleasant life 
for Absolutely. the complete opposite Absolutely. of pleasantries. So we we I think we're getting into this kind of this airy new age, you know, uh, watered down spirituality that's really hurting people internally as opposed oh, to <laughs> as opposed to healing there. them. Yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. And so that you know that's that that's that's basically that's basically I pretty much said my piece on it. And I, I hope I hope you understand where I'm coming from now because I, I finally no, I was able to make it out. <laughs> I understand perfectly. Yeah. Uh, where you're coming from. Um, yeah, I, I I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, absolutely. It's a hard one. That's a hard one. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard. It's a hard one. It's because it's hard to care that much. It's hard. It's hard. To, it's hard to really. It's hard to really to, to carry that cross and to carry that burden. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. And so, mm-hmm. like, I, I I like to have people. I mean, I I'll put it this way, like. Like in this little Facebook group we have, you know, if you know, there are people in here that that support, you know, the tra- the transgender community. You know what I'm trying to say, right, right. I mean, whether they under have my understanding or not, you know what I'm trying to say. I mm-hmm. I'm not, you know, like I'm not gonna boot them out. You know what I'm trying to say, and unless, unless they're saying something that's like uh highly offensive. You know what I'm trying to say. I heard this one sister was like, if you have something to say against. Uh, homosexuals is probably because you you're homo, you want to be you well, want to be homosexual yeah, yourself yeah, yeah. or something those, like that. Yeah, and, and, and if it yeah. gets to that point, then yeah, I'll probably will boot you out because you know you're yeah you're just not res- respectful. You know what I'm trying to say? But if but like I'm not I'm not to, I'm not to the point where like uh, I can't like be be kind and understanding. I I feel that kindness really you know that patience is really kindness. You know what I'm trying to say for for some people that are that are mm-hmm. On a on a certain path, but haven't necessarily put all the puzzle pieces together. You know what I'm trying to say? Right. And a further right. thing, I will say that I feel that you know, as Black people, we are very empathetic and compassionate people, even though we've gone through hell. And I feel mm-hmm. that a lot of times, a lot of these movements use our compassion oh, to yes. to divert part of it, their and, agenda. So for, yeah, <laughs> so that, that yeah, sure, that's part of it, but also to divert energy. To get us to divert energy from actually going in and healing ourselves, mm-hmm. we we're mm-hmm. so fucked up as a people. We don't have we don't have the energy to be dealing with whether transsexuals should have bathrooms or not. You know what I'm trying to say? Absolutely. And it alludes to something I said a few minutes ago. I'm focusing on myself. Yeah. That I can't get involved with what someone else is struggling with. So as long as when we're in the same common place, we're respectful of each other. That's all I can ask for. A- 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 absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. My my whole so, yeah. My whole I'm thing sorry. is my whole thing is just as you know, as someone that's trying to create somewhat of a community. My thing is like, I've I've realized that there are some empaths that are empaths that are just like you know what, as long as it doesn't hurt me, I I don't see a problem with it. You know what I'm trying to say? Right. right. But. What if it's hurting them? You know what I'm trying to say? They're gonna to have to figure that out for themselves. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly you it. You can't you can't make them see they're hurting themselves. They have to wake up to that for themselves. Yeah, but the thing is while the, while they're hurting themselves, while while they're while they're going and getting, you know, their penises cut off or their vaginas turned into mm-hmm. peni- makeshift penises, you know what I'm trying to say, mm-hmm. while while they're going and they're they're getting um uh, uh, I'm not sure what it's called, like uh, estrogen or testosterone put in them, right. chemicals, right. whatever it is. Right, the hormones. Are... They're being supported by our women. You know what I'm trying to say? You know, yeah. the, 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 energy, the energy of our people that should be going into healing the traumas of slavery and the traumas of, of, of rape, you know what I'm trying to say, and the traumas of abuse and the traumas of, within their own family. Absolutely. They're 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 now diverting our energy of of us healing ourselves to you know oh well let's 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 make a, a perfect matrix where everybody can have what they want in it you know in my understanding and this is this goes along with the Buddhist understanding as far as I know Buddha went through the pain that he went through and, and the pain that he endured to break the cycle to to to, to break the cycles of reincarnation. You know what I'm trying to say he realized mm-hmm. he realized that we were trapped as human beings in a cycle of death and rebirth, death and rebirth. Right. Uh, so that sorry. that this word this this world is not perfect, 
Mm-hmm. In this world is not this world is not heaven or nirvana, mm-hmm. and that mm-hmm. he he was going to out of compassion for others do the inner work to free himself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he he didn't go around uh, trying trying to make government laws to make it so I can put on a purple dress and be accepted. You know what I'm trying to say? Okay, but hear what you said. Yep. He didn't go around making laws. Mm-hmm. He was worried about his own awakening. Out of, out, of, passion. Out, of, out of compassion, exactly, for others. Yes. No, 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 no. He was worried about his own awakening. Mm-hmm. Once he awakened out of compassion, he left the roadmap for others to follow. Mm-hmm. This is what I did to awaken. Mm-hmm. You can try it too. He didn't put down an edict saying, you better do this. You have to do this. You can only do this. It's for those that it resonated with. Mm-hmm. One of the things that Buddha said was, don't believe something just because I said it. Try it out for yourself. If it works for you, use it. If it doesn't work, get rid of it. So, again, like I said before, instead of us being distracted by those in our community that don't really operate on a level that we agree with, yeah. or trying to take from our energy, as you say, yeah. focus on yourself, focus on connecting with those that share your philosophy and opinion yeah absolutely and build with what you have if you can't have an army i'd rather have an army of 10 yeah. strong able-bodied people than an army of 100 that's distracted and disconnected yes able can't able, build able spirited up. people too yeah uh, right <laughs> yeah so so you know it, it's, it's not quantity it's quality exactly bingo so if, if someone else is struggling if someone they have to go through that struggle yeah they have to. If, yeah. they, if they don't get it in this lifetime, maybe they'll get it in the next lifetime. If, if they're lucky, you know, we're, 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 if, we're, if, we're, if, we're, we're, we ain't going to be here forever. Lucky. So they're going to they're gonna no, have to learn soon. <laughs> hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Exactly. Because there's some, you know, some people don't realize this is a journey that we're on. They think everything is, you know, party, feel good, get down. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm living my best life kind of thing. Yeah. And, you know, that's that's not always the case. Yeah, but everyone doesn't know it. Yeah, and uh, you know, as as I'm hearing you, t- t- you know, say what you're saying, I'm thinking to myself, you know what? Part of me is like, hey, here I am speaking to this this beautiful spiritual brother, you know, this this enlightened being, <laughs> and, no, and, no. And, and and here I am speaking about homosexuals, and I'm wasting, you know, like I, I hope, no, 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 but, no, it, it's it's a perfect conversation good, good, to have good, because good. This, these are the times that we live in. Yeah, and a lot of times, as as black people especially black men yep so many people get put before us exactly bingo you know even though we're out here being killed we're being falsely incarcerated exactly we're, we're being labeled drug dealers rapists you exactly know, this whole toxic masculinity thing. oh boy you own, heard that one? Oh my god that, uh, that, we have we have our own fight i can't worry about someone else's fight yeah exactly but, but you know i have i have a lot yeah my part you know I have a lot of female listeners, you're trying to say, so I'm like mm-hmm. that maybe, you know, in, in, in the, in, in our group, I, I had a poll about, you know, what, what, what do, you, do you think that the, the LGBTQ, LGBTQ community is a positive or has, has had a positive or a negative impact on the black community as a I whole? I remember that, yes. And I think the majority of people said that it's had a negative impact, but the, you know, it was like nine people that said negative, it was still like seven people that said they don't know or they're unsure. And two people said it had a positive impact. Yeah. So yeah. there are still a lot of there are still a lot of people that are kind of on the fence about this. So I was like, you know, this this would be a good a good a good you know way to be able to bring this up, you know, because it needs to be talked about. And you're right. There there are there are we do have our own issues, and there are a lot of black men that are thinking to themselves, where 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 is the compassion for us? You know what I'm trying to say like, you know, if I, I don't like. You know, I, I thought this is another topic that I got to kind of talk about. I, th- I kind of find it strange with uh, this the whole Black Lives Matter thing. 
you know, I was really rooting for them when they came out, you know, but I didn't, I oh. didn't quite, I didn't quite understand the whole scope of it. And I kind of realized mm-hmm. that I, you know, I'm, I might have had my emotions played on too, <laughs> you know, like in the same way, in the same way I was saying earlier that we know we, we of, oftentimes have our energy ciphered by other yes. groups for their agendas. You know what Absolutely. I'm trying to say? So we can avoid, we can avoid our own issues. Absolutely. I realized that, you know what, I had, I, w- I was having my energy ciphered there because I was going hard for these guys and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really understand that there was maybe a little bit of an underlying agenda there, you know, until I, until I went to their website and, and read everything that they're about. And I realized yes. that they were given, uh, you know, I, I think it was like, like billions of dollars by this, this one, uh, homosexual, uh, billionaire named, uh, George Soros, I believe his name is. Mm-hmm. And I'm mm-hmm. thinking to myself, would, would, would he have given you that money if you didn't support the LGBTQ community? Would he, would he, would he have helped, would he, would he have cared about black men in jail in prison? If, if that was, if that Trojan horse was not in the package, I wonder, what do you think? Yeah. Well, first of all, as a community, we're, we're, we're just still in that slave mentality of being bought and sold yeah. by the highest bidder. Yeah. Um, the way I judge whether a movement is real or not, I compare it to everybody else. You don't see Asians out here saying Asians' lives matters. You don't see Arabs out here saying Arab lives matter. They're building communities. They're building families. Yes. They're building businesses. Exactly. They have their own schools. Bingo. And they have an infrastructure infrastructure that will withstand all the crap that we continue to go through. Yes, exactly. For us just to build a, a Black Lives Matter, okay, where do we go from there? You don't go. We can't you, even, you don't go from there because guess what? 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 what, what do you? Uh, number one, black are, lives. We are, black <laughs> lives is always mad. You yeah, know, saying, no, but I'm just. I'm just saying. I'm just gonna make this quick point though. Like we are, we already have the the uh, the biggest death of black people is actually abortion and and prophylactics. You're trying to say, mm-hmm, uh, and mm-hmm. then you know, and I'm I'm not necessarily have any issue with that, or you know, if if it, if it wasn't used to to for genocide, I wouldn't. Have, you know what I'm trying to say? I wouldn't have any issue with abortion, but unfortunately, I realized that that was used to target black people more than it was absolutely. as a, as a general thing for women to have options. So absolutely. another, again, another Trojan horse that I fell for, <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Uh, due to, but go ahead. You, what you find people say history repeats itself. Yes. So people yeah. repeat themselves. And the, the black church isn't what it used to be. Yes. Back in the day, uh, black families aren't what they used to be. Yeah, I mean, I see the difference in how we're living and how my grandparents lived. Mm-hmm. We don't build anything. We don't own anything. We don't control anything. But we want to march and say we matter. Maybe we might get more respect if we came to the table with something. Yeah, and again, now you just brought up another issue, another Trojan horse. And I, 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 I love and respect the brother, but again, he might, he might again have been played on too, Martin Luther King. Uh, yeah. he, you know, I'm saying he probably was a, you know, he definitely was a Trojan horse. You know what I'm trying to say? So I'm just saying that like, I don't think he was a Trojan horse. I respect and admire a lot of what he and the civil rights workers did because mm-hmm. they had fire hoses on them, dogs sit at the back of the bus. They were marching like, look, we're tax paying American human beings treat us with respect. Somehow that morphed into uh, integration, but the initial fight was to see us and respect us as American human beings. And I will always appreciate that because that man showed more bravery than I've ever had to show in my lifetime. I agree. And I, and I, and I love and respect him for that. I don't disrespect him. All I'm saying is that he himself may have been used. You know what I'm he trying was. to say? He was. Okay. And he said at the end of his life, I think I integrated my people into a burning building. Bingo. Exactly. That's exactly it. So I'm just saying that like these, like you said, history repeats itself, right? So I'm just mm-hmm. saying, then I'm just saying that like in the, in the way that Malcolm X talked about Martin Luther King, you know what I'm trying to say? And told, right. and told right. him that, no, this, this guy is, he's not, <laughs> well, he's, being, he's, he's being used against you. You know what I'm trying to yes. say? And a lot yes. of black people ignored that at the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm just do, I'm just doing my job as again. I, I I say I live by five principles: love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. I'm doing my job to 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 say to to you know to say the truth 
as far as I know it, so it can be off, it can be on the record. And so I can let it go. You know what I'm trying to say? And it'd be like, okay, it's out there, you know, because, um, you said, you said again about building strong communities. Well, communities again are created by a man and a woman, you know, <laughs> I'm just going, you know, I'm just, no, it's, it's no. a, it's a hard, trust me. Yeah. It's a, I, I feel you. You know, I, I, I look at so many sisters that talk about black male patriarchy and I'm like, since when? Not in my lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> there ain't no men in the household. Exactly. You know? So I, I, I and, get it. Yeah. And you know, there, there has been, and that goes, that goes, that goes into the, the, the Trojan horse of feminism and the, 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 what's it? Welfare, the welfare system, the housing and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, goodness gracious. And the thing is that it's a hard pill to swallow. I know a lot of women are kind of, are beginning to wake up from that. I know a lot of men have already woke up from that, from that. And it's put, Mm -hmm. and now what it's done is it's put a rift between us spiritually. You know what I'm trying to say? It's been a rift between us. It's It's been a rift, but I'm saying that white people have played upon that rift strategically. But you can't be played unless you're just out there vulnerable and looking for acceptance. A lot of us still think the white man's ice is colder. Yeah. And we still think they have the answer. They go, they, they... White people come with the savior complex, mm-hmm. and a lot of us buy into their savior complex, yeah. thinking they're going to save us. Yeah, they're not giving us this. Why are they doing this? And I think some of us feel that integration they thought was going to be fifty-fifty. No, integration means I let two of y'all in the door. Yeah, we're integrated, door shut. Yeah, you know, but we're not building for ourselves. Yeah, just 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 make sure you leave all your businesses behind. You know, let them let them decay and, and, and die off in the meantime. Yeah, and, and a lot of things I, you know, listen to a lecture from an older brother, mm-hmm. which, you know, older than me. I didn't know in high school there was a time you could get your plumber's license, your electrician's license. A lot of black people who weren't going to school were learning these trades. But once integration started, they ended all of those programs. Mm-hmm. So now we're no longer carpenters. We're no longer electricians. We don't build anything. We're standing on line with 500 other people and they only need five new employees. Yep. And we're competing for the same jobs instead of making our own jobs. And I'm looking at these Arab dudes out here every morning. They're selling their bagels, their coffee, a dollar here, two dollars here. They make hundreds of dollars every day. But for, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not doing this. Anymore. It adds up. Yeah. It adds up. By any means necessary, it adds up. And, and we just don't put in that work like we used to as a people. Yeah, but you know what? This is this 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 is this is the esoteric Christian in me. And all that, and all that evil, and all that sickness, and all that you know, uh, social economic engineering and warfare. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel that it that it set, it set the stage for us to realize that the only way out of this is to go within. You know what I'm trying to say? I know what you're trying to say. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I, exactly I, I really, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm more of an esoteric Christian, so I, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not waiting for Christ, you know, or Horus mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm trying to become Him. You know what I'm trying to say? You are Him. Yes, exactly. So that's, 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 that's my path. So my thing is that, that like, ultimately, you know, you know, this show, this podcast is about trying to get people to go in and, and, and really, you know, learn meditation and, 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 and take spiritual practice seriously because that, that's really, um, as far as I can tell, and I, I posted this earlier, you know, the only thing that the white man fears is, uh, one, a standing army, which you're not, we're not going to build. Right. And, uh, two, they're, the, afraid, of, they're afraid of one black messiah. Yeah, exactly. And two, the power of God with inside of us. That's yeah. it. Because yeah. some people say, well, they're not going to, black, black uh, lives are not going to matter until black dollars matter. Black dollars, they print your money, dude. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. And if you want, mm-hmm. and if you wanted to create your own little nation, they just bomb it. That's not, you know what I'm trying to say? Which they have done time and exactly. again. Exactly. Pe- people I- don't, people don't learn from history. You know, look at Black Wall Street. So it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. It, you're mm-hmm. not, you're not, you're not going to, you're not going to, you're not going to get out of this through growing your own food and farming. That can help. You know, I'm trying to say you on your spiritual path by having something to eat that'll keep your vessel alive. But ultimately, you're you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to understand that in order to in order to have real power in this world, you're gonna need to bring your soul online in this dream and awaken, just like the Buddha, just like the Christ. You know, it's the same same story, different different uh, places. 
Well, I'm a, I'm a big proponent for growing food, um, especially so we can get off this genetic modified I, crap. I agree. I, I agree. It's, but a, it's I, a part- but I also remember as, as a kid in the 70s, yep. before this whole farmer's market thing became chic, mm-hmm. a lot of the old timers would come up from the South. Sweet potatoes, corn, string beans, sugar cane, apples, grapes. They brought collard greens, cabbage. They brought all that stuff up here in, in the back of their station wagon, in the back of their trucks, and they sold it. And that was our farmer's market. Mm-hmm. We don't have, I go to farmer's markets now, I don't even see black people selling anything. Yeah. It's all Latinos and Asians and, and a handful of white people. If you can't grow your own food and feed your own people, that's the basics. Yeah, food. well, they 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 made sure they made sure that that was another that was another. I'm not sure for the Trojan horse, but they made sure that when subsidies were given out to farmers, that black farmers were their their applications were thrown in the, thrown in the trash. So that that, that that was another whole thing. I mean, there, there's so, there, again, but this goes back to uh, get down to it. You know, ultimately, it, it's all it's all teaching. You know, I'll put it this way. But this is going to be maybe a similar far out to say, but in the Christian understanding, all these things are to help humble black people to see what they really are. You know what I'm trying to say? Meaning, How long is it going to take us to see? <laughs> well, it's been that, over 400 years now. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> that that's that's how that's how freaking prideful and 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 just what's the what's the I guess pride what's the what's ignorant. The, Ignorant, sure. I'm just trying to think. What what is the opposite of humble? What is that? Is it prideful? Arrogant. Arrogant. Prideful. We're, yeah, black people are just so fucking arrogant, man. That 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 they will not, they will not let pain teach them. You know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I I can't really say arrogant, Lewis, totally, because we're in a capitalist society, which will sell you dreams, and it sells dreams to the individual. It doesn't sell dreams to the collective. Like Japan, Japan moves as a nation because they're all Japanese. You know, India moves as a nation because they're all Indian. We have a little bit of everybody, so they're not going to sell dreams to the blacks only. They're mm-hmm. going to sell it to the individual, and they're going to sell it in the form of Beyonce, in the form of Bruno Mars, in the form of Mega Millions, in the form of, oh, you can buy this car, or you can buy this item. They external. They want to keep you outside of yourself, and they do it to all of us. It's not just black people. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying we've so, we've been we've been here the longest out of all the nations on the planet Earth. So I'm just saying that if you if you're a black person now on Earth, you know you are either you know you're probably just a, a either probably a, you know the Bible talks about talks about us as, as just dead, but a, lo- yeah. a lot of us are just laggers. We're just laggers in in the in the the the, the raising of consciousness, and it's all good. I'm not you know I'm not you know I can speak about black, we can speak about black people and our problems all for, you know for another three hours you know, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. but uh, the truth of the matter is is that again I, I feel that we're all connected. You know even 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 though I feel that even if your soul's not on Earth down here on Earth, you know what I'm saying you're not awakened in the dream, which very few are. Um, right. Your soul is still somewhere. You know what I'm trying to say? You know, every mm-hmm. every mm-hmm. everyone is a star, right? We might not Absolutely. that that may not be down here with you while you're while you're in this this matrix or this dream, but as me, people like me and you, we do meditation, we raise ourselves up and raise our consciousness. Mm-hmm. Again, mm-hmm. I feel that we're all connected by invisible strands, right? So as I pull up in that strand that is me, or you pull up in that strand that is you, we as a collective begin to raise. You know, mm-hmm. so that's why that's why our inner our inner work. Is as important as 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 important as marching. You're trying to say our inner work is you know as in, as important as voting. You're know trying to say Absolutely. to Absolutely. to to those who understand it, the the spiritual power it, it brings. And I find also, Luis, um, even for those who don't have spiritual understanding, there are people watching you mm-hmm. saying, "Dang, how does this brother? He's always positive. He's always doing something." They're watching you. And eventually you get people come up to you and say, yo, man, what are you, what are you doing? You know, you're always positive. You're always doing this. You're an example. You're an example. So it, 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 you're touching people and you might not know it yet. You're influencing people. You might not know it yet. They haven't shown themselves. You might get somebody to come to you two years from now. Oh, man, I was on your Facebook page. You did this podcast or you put these posts. I started 
learning more about this, learning more about that, you started me on this path. I want to thank you for it. So just your walk, just the life that you're living can be touching people. They just haven't come forth and, and show themselves yet. That's, that's beautiful, brother. I'm, I'm smiling right now. Cause that's, that's, that uh, that's something that I, I look forward to to have to having come to fruition. That's that's just a, a, be- a beautiful uh, sentiment. Thank you. And it will. And yeah. it will. It already is. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, it already is. Yeah. Anything you want to close on, brother? I know we're hitting about you know about an hour and a half now. It's been it's been an yeah. absolute <laughs> beauty of a conversation, man. And I hope I hope shoot. Where, where do you where do you live at? I, I can edit it out if you want. But where do you live at? Where do you stay at, brother? I'm in Manhattan. I'm in Manhattan. Okay, shoot. You're not that far, man. I'm in Connecticut, you know? Shoot. Oh, okay. you know what? Cool. I'm, I'm heading up to, uh, not to put a plug, but I'm, I'm just going to head up to Lenox, Massachusetts next weekend to uh, Cripalo. No, okay. you said Connecticut. I'm talking about Massachusetts. Yeah. Forget it's all me. good. I'm, I'm, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all good. But, um, you know, I, I want to thank you. I want to thank you because I was someone who said I don't have anything to say and we've been talking for 90 minutes yeah you got a lot to say <laughs> <laughs> and you know i appreciate your page i appreciate your energy i appreciate speaking with you you know getting learn you know getting to know you mm-hmm. and i i feel like my heart is open right now after this conversation and, and uh we have to push each other absolutely we have to not only push each other we also have to water each other like you would water a plant and make sure we know we're growing. Exactly. Beautiful. So I do thank you and I appreciate you. Uh, p- pleasure and honor is mine, brother. We'll, we'll speak soon, all right? Yes, sir. All right. Peace. Peace.